All right, what you see before you here is a Colt 1883 hammerless double barrel side-by-side -side shotgun. Very, very nice. Um, so I understand that these were made uh, per order. So you probably had to be pretty well off back then to afford something like this because it's all hand fit, hand engraved. I'm sure that's hand checkered. Uh, just very, very impressive craftsmanship on this. You've got your Damascus barrel, uh, rust blue, I'm sure, uh, and whatnot. So this is a uh, very, very old but they certainly don't make them like they used to, so to speak. All very, very nicely engraved. I think I already said that, so. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, we got this in the shop just to kind of go over. A guy just inherited it from some family members, and it's obviously been really well taken care of. The bore looks really nice, you know, just in great condition. These are worth yeah, a good couple thousand bucks, depending on condition and era and stuff like that. Uh, imagine that probably was engraved at one time, but it's been it's worn off. So I'm not sure if that was supposed to say something or not. But uh, anyway, like I said, I just thought I'd shoot a video real quick. A lot of people are unfamiliar with how to take these apart. Um, I'm not going to go into an entire detail strip here, but I'm going to at least show you how to take it apart to give it a proper cleaning. Uh, a lot of people just are a little bit scared of green to take them, uh, especially the buttstock off. And you really don't want to get solvents and things like that in the, in the wood. <clears throat> so this is probably just like a kind of me giving back to the community, public service announcement kind of thing. You know, don't be afraid to take this apart if you've got the proper tools. So, uh, you know, typically with a, a break open style shotgun like this, you'd, you'd uh, push the lever to the, to the right and then break open the barrels. So that's typically how you would load the gun. You know, load up a couple shells, slam it shut, and you want to see that this lever is either vertical or a little bit to the left like that. Uh, if you see it when it closes all the way, and if the lever's off to the side like this, you know that uh, latch is really getting worn out or something's not completely latching. And conversely, if you see it way over to the side over here, that's getting to the point of getting worn out. So just be cognizant of that. This one's in good shape. That's as far to the left as I can push it. So it's not dead center, but it's certainly within a a safe realm of a lock up there. And so once you got your shells in there, there's a safety uh, lever here. So you can see safe. So to fire it, so on safe, you know, nothing's gonna fire. To fire it, you just simply push that forward and then you can select either of the two triggers. Okay, so once they fire, you'd open the open the breech. Takes a little leverage, <clears throat> and your ejectors would uh, eject the the case or the shells, the empty shells, so you could pull them out. This one doesn't fl fling them out like some some shotguns do, but uh, at least gives you a way to pull those out, and put some new ones in, and take two more shots on. Skeet, trap, ducks, squirrels, whatever you're, whatever you're blasting there. Uh, so, it's kind of in a nutshell how you work that. <clears throat> all right, so, to take her apart. Uh, really all you need is a screwdriver with the proper uh, tips. So, something like this, proper gunsmithing tool bits, um, flathead screwdriver is basically it. Uh, you want <clears throat> a selection with uh, different thicknesses and 
width on the head to fit the screws. <clears throat> uh, but the first thing you'd be you'd be doing here would be to get the forehand off. And this one has a real convenient latch right here. So some of them, uh, the less expensive um, break open shotguns like this, you would just, so the forehand has a, a lip, so you would just pry this off. Um, it's always a little nerve wracking the first time you do it. You don't know how tight it's going to be and you're worried you're going to break the wood, but these are designed to be like done like that, but not, not the Colt. Not the 1883. This one's got a latch. Extra fancy. So, <clears throat> you don't even need a tool for that. You just It's not even hard. You just very easy to get your, your fingy under there. Flip it up. And then the assembly comes right off. So it's funny, even under here, it's very well fit. There's no gap in the wood at all. The screw's been nighter blued. <laughs> it's just silly how nice this thing is <clears throat> compared to modern day production. Plastic crap you see anymore. But the latch, simple mechanism in there. There's just a block of steel that captures, captures a little notch in the hanger there. Right, so once that four ends off, you simply open the breech, and then the uh, four end will prevent it from doing this, but with it off, it will overcome its rotation there on its knuckle hinge. So you get it up there and you push it kind of forward and out. And you can see how that's working. That just goes around the uh, hinge pin here, knuckle pin, whatever you want to call it, inside the frame. And that's how you get the barrels out. <clears throat> uh, these two little nubs are the way that the system cocks the hammers inside. So with them down like that, you know that they're, they're cocked and ready to go. Um, you can still dry fire this thing in this condition. Um, I wouldn't recommend not doing that, but if you happen to do it, uh, it's not hard to uh, reset. You can reset them by just pushing these down or um, assembling the barrel back together and then they'll recock. It's, it's real easy. So, um, so before I forget, <clears throat> we'll just go ahead and uh, dry fire them to uh, show you how that's done. <clears throat> now for a precaution, I'm going to go ahead and dry fire it onto something uh, like the handle of a hammer just to give it a little bit of a cushion um an older gun you know i'm sure it's safe to dry fire this thing but just in case and this will let us uh this will show you which trigger controls which barrel essentially so we'll go ahead and dry fire that forward trigger first and see which one fires okay so forward trigger is going to fire your right hand barrel So the rearward trigger <clears throat> will fire your left, left barrel, right? So forward trigger, right, rear trigger, left. Okay, so then you can see these are in like the more vertical position. So in this condition, you can't just put this back because these need to be downward to capture inside the holes there. So that's the problem if you, if you have accidentally dry fire it or you're not <clears throat> familiar with this, you're gonna be like, oh crap, now I can't put this back together. Well, it's not a problem. Take the barrels back off and use your forend. So again, those holes just go in there and then you can use that to essentially recock the gun. All right, so. Now you got your barrel off, so most people know how to take that off. That's pretty easy. Got the barrels off and the forend, so we'll set those aside. So now, well, dang, what do I do with this? So it's, there's a lot of screws. It's a little intimidating, and uh, I would caution you, there are springs inside here that are just really, really strong. It takes specialized tooling a lot of the times. 
or uh, real heavy duty vices and things like that to get these to, to reset. So that's why I'm not gonna get into the entire disassembly. Um, also, this is just a very valuable old shotgun. I just don't, it's one of those things you don't wanna mess with it if it doesn't need to be messed with, right? So even doing what I'm gonna be doing here is, I mean, don't do it unless you absolutely have to. And this gun was stored for a long, long time and had a whole bunch of gunk in there and just was really sluggish in operation and needed a good cleaning. So I, you know, don't want to, again, I don't want to get solvents into the wood and prematurely, you know, absorb that. <clears throat> so a lot of times with shotguns and a lot of rifles too, uh, one method is to take off the butt plate and there'll be like a through bolt that goes through. Um, and then just pulls the pulls the action into the stock. Uh, well, in this case, that's not how this is done. So don't even bother taking off your butt plate. There's no need to. That's all solid wood. The whole thing's solid, so there's nothing there. Uh, another um, thought process would be to take off the grip cap. Maybe there's something under there going this way. Well, not this. That's also just a decorative piece, that uh, solid wood under there, so there's nothing to, to get to. So <clears throat> there's a, there is an easy way to do this. You just gotta remove some of these screws. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure this is on safe so that I don't accidentally dry fire this during the process and we're good. <clears throat> so first thing to do is just kind of look around. You know, what do we see? We see a bunch of screws and screws are a mechanical device to hold things together, right? So there's gotta be a way to, to get this apart. One under here. Uh, there's a couple holding on the trigger guard to the stock. Uh, there's one here that has an obvious separate piece, which is usually the trigger assembly on these. And then there's one on forward here, and one on the side, and then there's a pin. So, what I found was we'll take off the screw here, the big screw underneath the latch which goes all the way through and uh, attaches underneath the trigger guard piece here. So you've got to manually push that forward and get it out of the way and then get your screwdriver in there with the proper blade. And just so I'm with these, you're pushing down as you're turning because you don't want to round off the nice edges there of the screw, it's decorative. And you certainly don't want one too wide to scratch up the uh, any uh, anything surrounding the screw like that. So let's see, can you see that? So the screw's snug, but it's certainly nothing. Uh, you need additional tools to get rid of or get loose. And so as that screw backs out, it gets looser and looser. And then finally, you come to the end of the thread, <clears throat> and it's out of there, but uh, definitely not releasing the stock. It's not even wiggly yet, so a couple more screws here. We're going to have to get the trigger guard off. That's necessary, so we need a slightly smaller driver to fit those little slots properly. Set that aside, and same deal. We're going to just go ahead and push down as we unturn this, unscrew it. If you feel like that screw is gonna, that the driver is gonna slip, slip in the slot of the screw, stop and try a different driver. Unless you want to mar your screw up. Okay, so there's one, and then the second one, right back here. And these simply are wood screws, as you, as you can tell. Coarse thread wood screw that goes right into the wood. Now here's a little bit of a warning for you too. These are usually finished in, as in uh, they'll sand that stock down with this in place. So <clears throat> be a little careful when you're trying to pry. So we're going to have to pry this up and out. 
because those unfamiliar would just be like, okay, I got the screws out and now it's you know still tight. I don't know what the heck's going on. Well, most of the case with these styles of shotguns, this whole thing is threaded into the frame here. So basically we've got to pry this up and out gently and carefully to, to get it past the wood and then the whole thing turns. So since I've had this out recently, it shouldn't be too much of a hassle. Um, so just pulling on it like that, I'm, I need a little leverage this way. So a lot of times you can like put a piece of wood in there, something soft that's not gonna mar anything. And we just need to pull this up and out. So I've got a square dowel. That should be good to get in there. There we go. Okay, so it's popped loose. And you can see, once you get that loose, it's pretty obvious what's going on here. So it won't turn that way, but it will turn loosely that way. And again, just be real careful. You don't chip out any wood or anything like that. You want to be prying or pulling gently kind of away. It's hard to describe it. If you had this in front of you, you'd, you'd understand. <clears throat> All right, so with that, I'm just gonna carefully unthread that till it comes out. And then there's the threaded portion <clears throat> that threads right into there. Okay, so now, still nothing. We got a couple more screws. It's revealed one here. And this is not a decorative screw, but you still want to be careful. So we're going to go for this one, the, the screw rear of the trigger assembly. This one attaches to the wood. No, I'm sorry. This one attaches to the upper portion of the frame up here up here. So it is a machine screw, but uh, hidden so it's not decorative. <clears throat> so now, now it's getting a little loose, but still unable to pull that out. There's one screw left right there. We're going to switch back to our larger bit and being very careful pushing down and turning counterclockwise. We're going to loosen that screw. Okay, so it's a shorter decorative machine style screw. But still not coming out. What you got to do is gently, this whole piece is separate. So you can grab the triggers and kind of wiggle it. Try to get it out like that usually going to be tight. If this has never been disassembled, this is going to be very tight because this is also hand finished in. Okay, we're going to hold it in a vise. We're going to hold the frame here and that allows the entire um, stock portion, rear of a word of this, to be hanging loose in the air. So, very gently. You can see, I don't know if you can see that moving. But this has been freed from the wood slightly. So get something under there, being as careful as you can not to damage the wood, to pry that slightly upward, and you'll kind of feel this start to lift away from the, uh, from the frame area there. So the idea here is we're trying to lift this whole mechanism up and out. Okay. So I wiggled the stock slightly, and that finally brought this loose. So there's our trigger assembly, and now finally the whole stock comes out. <clears throat> okay, so there's your trigger assembly. Now you have access to the triggers, you can clean these up. Lube them up real nice. This is your safety lever. 
Um, the way that works, you can kind of see when the triggers are in their cocked condition. That lever brings this safety sear in place, and then you can't fire. And so safety off removes that block, and you can manipulate the triggers. There are trigger return springs. There's little leaf springs under there. So the triggers will return on their own to where they're supposed to be. Very simple design. Okay. And then <clears throat> the entire action uh, is in one uh, convenient unit. Now you can uh, you can soak this in solvent and then blow it out with compressed air. The only thing to be really careful about is the uh, latch spring here. That um, can potentially come out on you. So it tucks up into the frame there in a little pocket, but uh, it is free to rotate away. Um, you probably have to put some effort to get that out. But uh, it's best to just be cognizant of that as you're, if you're spraying this out with air or whatever. Okay, so you can just uh, you do that. Um, you can see through where the uh, hammers or the firing pins go through. So it's real easy to flush this out. <clears throat> this can be further disassembled, but uh, like I said, I'm not going to get into that because old valuable shotgun that's working perfectly fine. There's no reason to do any of that. You know, I'm not afraid of doing it, but it is a chore to get all this back together. The mainsprings in here are just very, very strong. So these are the sears for the trigger or the hammers for the firing pins. <clears throat> um, so you see one was released there and then the other one there. So that's how the trigger system works. It comes in and pushes up on these levers that uh, go in here through the frame. Then your sears and springs are in there. <clears throat> and then that, you know, obviously that releases the uh, firing pins. Dead simple design, um, elegant, and, uh, you know, very, very nice, well thought out system there. So that's as far as I'm going to go. This will allow you to at least clean it properly without getting the wood all soaked with solvent. <clears throat> or whatever you're using to clean your shotgun with. Okay, um, so now I'm going to leave the uh, system in its fired state for reassembly, but it's simply the uh, reverse of how we just took it apart. So, after you got everything cleaned, you got your uh, trigger assembly ready to go, your safety, so there's one thing to be cognizant of here when you're reassembling. So this lever needs to engage into that, into there properly. You can't just shove this in randomly and, and expect it to go back and then start hammering it together. That you'll have a bad day, you'll bend stuff. You can see if you kind of just loosely put it together that that lever has to be up in there when it goes, when it all goes back together. So if I were to try to put it together like this and try to smush this in and put the screw in, it's going to crush. It's going to crush something, damage something. So be, be real careful. <clears throat> what you got to do is get these triggers reset. So you kind of push this back with your fingies, and that almost always just goes back by itself. So one more time off. Take both triggers, push them back, and that should just fall into place. There's no spring on it, but it, it just, that's where it likes to be. So that's where it'll go. So with that like that, you'll line this up. And you'll kind of see how it wants to be right in the middle, sort of. Like that, there we go. So it pops right back in there. And then this portion is ready to be screwed back in. So unfortunately you can't do this 
without the stock. You need to put the stock in and do this all at once. <clears throat> so you gotta be real careful, just watch, watch all that stuff. So you don't want it all the way back, but you don't want it all the way forward. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna grab our stock and reinstall the uh, action mechanism right back in and then if you turn it over you can kind of see in there um, but we'll show you the side view here as we're doing this so sometimes you can fish it in like this And I heard it, you, you may have heard that click. If you need to rewind it, you can do that. It, uh, you can, I kind of heard it click into place. And you can also tell because everything's here without forcing anything. And then, so if I operate the safety, you can see those triggers moving. So we know that that's all engaged and in place where it needs to be. Um, one thing might be a good idea is to take a soft hammer, like a nylon tipped hammer. Or just put a cloth over this and just give it a little tap and if that seats into the frame you know you're good so one more little check here so the triggers are not moving at this point so if you're if you're a little bit unsure we can put this screw back in temporarily just to hold everything I'm not going to tighten it all the way yet, and then take our forearm and recock the system. And then, so it's on safe, push enough fire, and then off. So now we know that <clears throat> that mechanism is properly installed. So we can go ahead and tighten that up. And as you're tightening, you can kind of put your hand or your thumb on here, and if it feels like it's sucking that back down into the frame. And then you, you want to note where that screw started life at, and it was vertical. Usually they'll finish these screws off vertical in direction of the, of the shotgun. Just needs a little bit more. Ooh. Very careful not to scratch it. So there, <clears throat> now it's tight, fully tightened. Uh, that screw is going to be next. Now this one I'm not going to yark on too bad or too tight, <clears throat> just snug because it's con essentially contained by everything else and doesn't need to be super, super tight. And I can tell there's no wiggle right now in the stock anyway, so that's fine. It's all good. All right, so now we got to thread our trigger guard back in. Just like any screw, you just want to eat, carefully start it in and you'll feel those threads kind of engage at the proper angle. Certainly don't want to strip these or cross thread them. So now I can tug on this or wiggle it and it's not coming out. So we can just go ahead and turn it in all the way. Be careful of that trigger there. So we want to kind of pull the trigger. This is why it's, it's best to do this in the fired state so that this trigger has uh, can be uh, manipulate it away because if I were trying to, it's going to gouge that trigger guard right down here. You can just see that right there. So now I have to pull the trigger to get it out of the way and I can fully turn that in. And that's where it stops.
So we know that's where uh, that's where we're good. We don't want to we don't want to force this and do another turn. So that should be loose. That doesn't have to be tight whatsoever. And now one little thing you've got to be careful as you're reseating this entire thing is you know you're going to bend it inevitably like you see. So what we're going to do is push this from the rear. So I'm pushing sort of kind of in this direction to bend it into its into its wooden uh, recess there. But we're pushing kind of diagonally this way to kind of more or less force it into its wooden recess like that. Okay, so once you're there, you want to kind of hold this. You don't want it popping back out because it could, could damage the wood there. So I'm holding it down. We're going to start with the rear screw. Get that started. And so that rear screw will prevent it from popping out accidentally. Hold that tight as I screw this in. And know how I'm using my thumb to kind of guide that screw bit. Okay, and then with your soft hammer, you can kind of help it, help it go back in flush with the wood like it's supposed to be. Make sure the screw's tight, but not stripping tight, stripping the wood tight. Okay, so traditionally that'd be finished. So a couple times unscrewing it, it's gonna, it's gonna do that. It's cause some of the risks you run doing this stuff. Okay, so then you can put the uh, next screw in without having to pinch down on that. Get a slightly smaller dry wringer. <clears throat> and then just like the other one, that should suck it up into the, into the wood, that little recess, as it should be. Just like that. Okay, almost there. So we got that final top screw to go into underneath the latch. And there we go, finished off vertically like it should be. Okay, so there's that. Okay, again, now we have to recock our fire control unit. So pushing the forward, forehand into those little nubs and I'm pushing forward just to make sure they don't slip out. will recock the system there. Okay, then you take your barrel, gonna hook it into that knuckle pin, in there, and we're pulling back to make sure it's fully engaged, and then on the tabletop, push down until it latches closed. And then you simply take your forend with the latch open, stick it back on, Close it, close your latch, and you're good to go. Okay, so that's how you take apart a Colt 1883 or any double side-by-side -side shotgun that you may have, especially the hammerless style. Uh, that's pretty similar, pretty similar way to do it. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this uh, Quick little tutorial. Uh, again, don't be afraid to do this and, uh, as long as you got the right tools, you're careful, you're, uh, you take your time. Um, again, it's very, it's a lot easier to do this in a vise, like the entire thing. You know, there's no worry about crushing anything here. You got two flats on each side. Very, very easy, just put it in a padded vise. And that way you have both hands free to 
you know, make sure that screw is not going to slip out of its slot, especially for somebody that hasn't done this a lot. <clears throat> it just makes life a lot easier. So uh, again, hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, leave a like if this helped you out. Um, and if you're so inclined, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you hit the channel link, you'll find a whole bunch of videos. Um, I mainly specialize in bolt action rifles and uh, super high precision rigs like that. But, uh, you know, I'm, I, I have a, a, a good passion and love for these old guns too. Old firearms, especially the classic ones like this that are just beautiful. You know, they don't make them like this anymore for sure. So you'll find a whole bunch of videos on the channel. Just feel free to go ahead and explore around. Uh, leave a comment, and uh, y'all have a real nice day. Um, if you subscribe, you'll, uh, you'll be notified of new videos. You'll see, usually we upload something weekly. So, Jeff with Accurate Rifles and Restorations, signing out on this one. Thank you very much for watching again. If you made it to the end, great job, um, and take care.